Welcome back for another good game maker level. This one's going to have to do with scripts. You can see the word scripts here is one of the folders in game maker. In other programming languages, they call them methods or functions. Game maker happens to call them scripts. What they're going to allow you to do is make your code more efficient, flexible, reusable, and it's easier just to show you over the next uh, lesson or two how this is going to work. This program already has the player and the ghost coded with a bunch of behavior. I'm just going to jump into the player to show you the first example of basic scripts. Now, the first one I'm going to show you is going to be the easy uh, use of scripts. Uh, I'll go to the space bar here, and this is where the player fires an arrow. What I'm going to do for my first script is I'm actually going to take that code, and I'm going to cut it out. Control X. Choof. And I've got that now. And I'm going to replace it with a line called fire, arrow, bracket, bracket. Now I get the red line because I haven't actually created a script with that name yet. So we'll come back and see how the color changes later. Now I'm going to leave the player. I'm going to go to the script folder, create a script. Now the script I give it, I'm going to give it the exact same name, fire, arrow, no bracket, bracket. Okay, just fire, arrow. And when I get into the code here, I'm just going to paste the code in. So what you get here, whoops, what you get here is this kind of use of a script is just me giving a name to a chunk of code that does a certain task, which is firing an arrow. Now when I use it like this, and I just said, okay, that script is done, you'll see it here I have the fire arrow script. And when I go back to the player, you can see it's recognized now and it's highlighted it in orangey yellow. And so that's how it works. When I actually go back to run the program, all it does now when it comes across that word fire arrow, it jumps into the script and runs that code exactly the same. You can see here I have my player firing the arrow and running the code exactly as if that code was just right here anyways. And that's how our basic scripts do work. Whichever object calls the script to run, the code runs as if it was right there in place of that line. Okay, so that's your most basic script. Here's another one we can do, just to show you how it can be a little more efficient. In this game, the player can get hit by two things that the ghost sends at us. The ghost can send a laser at us, or the ghost can send a rock at us. You'll see here when I get hit by a laser, I take five hit points off of the player. Then I check, are they under zero, less than zero? If so, I go to the game over room. Same thing when I get hit by a rock. So you probably have a lot of games like this where there's lots of different objects that could, let's say, hurt the player. And you keep repeating the exact same code. Now this time this code is only four lines, it's not too bad. But as your games start to get a little more advanced, you might be doing 20, 30, 40, 50 lines of code in here when the game ends. Now imagine the player can get hurt by 10, 20 different things. You certainly don't want to have to just sit there copy pasting. Anytime you're copy pasting, you should end up just doing this instead. Take this minus five code and check for the end of life. Cut it out. And let's call this damage player, bracket, bracket. I'm also going to go to the laser. I already have this code, so I can just replace this with damage player bracket bracket. Now you probably know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make a script called damage player and just stick that code in there. Now this is nice and efficient because if I have 10, 20 objects hurting the player, you only have to make this once. Damage player. and just paste the code in there and it runs through you know and it'll do the same thing now what's the advantage here besides saving you a lot of copy paste time for instance one line now handles the damage to the player there one line handles the damage to the player there the other benefit is if I ever want to go and change what happens when the players damaged I don't have to hop around to different objects anymore. I just go to one place, to the damage player script. And when I go there, any change I make, well, that's now the damage player script, 
And that's what happens when you call the script damage player. So that's your basic scripts. Now I'll add one more thing here before we get you just to do one or two practice ones yourself. One thing you could do with your scripts is you should document them. Because they're all sort of floating around in the folder here, inside the script folder, you might not know who uses it or what exactly the script does just by the name of it. So you should always say a little bit here. So I can say this. I can say that the name of it is damage player bracket bracket takes five life off of the player and you might even want to add a little bit like this called by the player object okay takes you five seconds to write this and now you know you take a week or two off making your game you come back you actually have a little note reminding yourself what the script does so that's your basic scripts we got a little challenge or two for you that are pretty easy and then you can uh We'll talk about part two of scripts, which takes them sort of up one level to make them much more versatile. You have to watch that video because it's good. It'll show you the real power of these scripts. Thanks for watching.